In this classic experiment by David Hubel and Torsten Wiesel, a microelectrode is implanted in the primary visual cortex, or V1, of an anesthetized cat to record the receptive field of a single neuron. A bar of light is shined on various locations in the cat's visual field. The microelectrode is connected to a speaker so that each action potential is registered as a clicking sound. The neuron fires vigorously to the onset of a bar of light at about 45 degrees. This firing pattern of the neuron is recorded by drawing X's along the bar's location. This is the on receptive field. In addition to the on receptive field, the neuron also responds to changes of light on the parallel space on either side of the X's. In this case, we hear clicking sounds when the light is turned off. These are the off fields of the neuron and are recorded as triangles. The neuron responds with more activity to the area below the X's, marked with five triangles, than the area above, marked with three triangles. Each individual neuron has its own preferred orientation and region of the visual field to which it responds. In this cell's receptive field, lines of triangles, referred to as the off-surround regions, flank the X's, which are the on-center region. The firing rate reaches a maximum only when the light is shined on the X's at the preferred orientation. Cells of the primary visual cortex with this type of receptive field and orientation preference are called simple cells. Widening the bar of light causes the firing rate to decrease. Diffuse light produces no response in the neuron, despite the fact that it shines upon the on-center region marked by the X's. Observe that the neuron fires when the edge of the light moves, leaving a portion of the triangles in darkness. Compare this again to the diffuse light. In this experiment, the same methods are employed to measure the receptive field of a different neuron in V1. Different orientations are tested until one is found that triggers maximum neuronal excitation, indicated by the intensity of the clicks. This time, a solid line is drawn to record the area of maximal fire. The cell measured in this experiment is called a complex cell. Compared to simple cells, a complex cell has a wider receptive field, and it fires when a bar of light is shined on any part of the receptive field. Like simple cells, complex cells are highly orientation selective. As indicated by the clicks, the further the orientation strays from the preferred angle, the less the cell exhibits an excitatory response. Complex cells respond to either light bars on a dark background or dark bars on a light background. Thus, complex cells can be considered more abstract line edge detectors than simple cells. They respond to the line edge on or off anywhere in the receptive field, as long as they are in a particular orientation. Hubel and Wiesel proposed that the receptive field of a simple cell can arise from the convergent input of a series of LGN neurons. The circular receptive fields of the LGN neurons, represented by the concentric circles, combine to form the receptive field of the simple cell. The on centers of LGN neurons, represented by smaller circles filled with triangles, combine to form the on center of the simple cell, as indicated by the rectangular dashes.
Likewise, the receptive field of a complex cell may depend upon the input of simple cells earlier in the visual processing pathway. Here, the dashes represent the receptive field of the complex cell, which is created by the convergent input of the receptive fields of multiple simple cells that have the same orientation preference. This feed-forward model, where a receptive field of a neuron is shaped primarily by neurons at an earlier visual processing stage, is a logical inference from the experiments just viewed. But the feed-forward model, as compelling as it may be, has yet to be definitively proven through experiments.